Ever had neighbors who wouldn't mind their own business? This guy in western New York is bidding farewell to his favorite weekly lunch spot after some nosy neighbors called the cops on him. 36-year-old John Pulowski usually enjoys eating his lunch parked at a quiet spot on the street under the shade of a tree. Pulowski says he always gets his sub from Tailgate Deli on Delaware Road, then heads north, turning right on Zimmerman before stopping in front of a house to eat his sandwich. He'd been doing this routinely for a year or so, during which time a nosy couple of 60-something-year-olds apparently had been keeping track of Pulowski and his weekly lunch ritual. A month ago, the couple decided to follow Pulowski back to his office parking lot to confront him. They said they'd been spying on him for over a year and did not believe he was only eating a sandwich. However, Barbara Tucker, the owner of the actual house Pulowski liked to stop in front of, said she had no knowledge of his weekly lunch visits and doesn't care if he's out there eating a sandwich. Tucker added she personally likes to sit in the cemetery to have lunch as nobody bothers you in the cemetery. As for Pulowski, he said he will visit his favorite lunch spot once more before finding a new place to eat his sandwiches. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Eating under a tree is probably perfectly innocent, but some behavior is just downright stalkerish. Woman takes social media stalking to the next level. A 31-year-old Scottish woman photoshopped herself into pictures stolen from a man's social media accounts to convince others that he was her boyfriend and that they were going to get married. Jill Sharp from Airdrie told friends she was engaged to a man named Gram, and they had a wonderful romance filled with flowers and champagne. To support her claims, Sharp stole Graham's photos, then edited out his real girlfriend and replaced the images with her own. For four years, Sharp continued the charade. She even followed Graham and his real girlfriend to places they had visited to take her own vacation photos. But after hearing so many excuses about why they couldn't meet Graham, Sharp's friends became suspicious. So they tracked Graham down and told him about Sharp. Graham and his real girlfriend were astonished to find out about Sharp's tall tales and called the police. The cops initially said they couldn't take any action as Sharp had not committed a crime, but after the story made the press, the cops reopened their inquiries into Sharp's bizarre fantasy double life. Love sick or just sick? Man steals maxi pads and undies from his grad school professor. It's okay to be fond of your teacher, but not this fond. A 31 year old Taiwanese man was caught red handed stealing undergarments and maxi pads from his former grad school professor. The suspect, surnamed Lin, admitted that he'd been infatuated with his 44 year old professor since grad school. According to police reports, the man has stalked the professor and followed her home multiple times since graduating a year ago. Earlier this month, he reportedly climbed up into the second floor of the teacher's house and rummaged through her closet. The prof's husband suddenly came up and called the police. Lin tried to hide in the study room, but police quickly found and arrested him. Police later found the weirdo's backpack, which just happens to contain the professor's camisole, stockings, and maxi pads. Lin admitted that this was the third time he snuck into the professor's house. The first time he stole her telephone contact list. The second time he graduated to stealing lingerie. He added that he didn't mean any harm, but he confessed that he was obsessed with her and wanted souvenirs. The creep's former professor graciously decided not to press charges as long as Lin promised he would stop harassing her. Lin, however, will still be prosecuted by police as theft and burglary is, you know, a crime. Experts advise Lin to seek professional help as soon as possible. Violinist Mia Matsumiya publishes archive of sick, disturbing online comments. American violinist Mia Matsumiya is talented, attractive, petite, and Asian. A combination that obviously grabs the attention of many a red-blooded male. Unfortunately for Mia, having a public profile means her pictures and posts are also available for everyone to view and comment upon. And as you can see, the messages she's received over the years range from the bizarre, to the perverted, to the downright disturbing. Speaking about the messages Mia told the Huffington Post recently, that she's received so many sick and disturbing messages over the years, she's almost become desensitized to them. But she recently decided enough was enough. So, to shed some light on the abuse and harassment she's been silently suffering all these years, she published a selection of the messages on an Instagram page called Perv Magnet. 
The page is full of invitations, some seemingly innocent, some almost poetic, and others sexually graphic, plus abusive and sometimes scary threats. Mia says the response to her Instagram page has been overwhelmingly positive, although some have accused her of using it to brag about how many compliments she gets. What do you think? A valiant crusader against the objectification of women, or a shameless attention seeker? Leave your clean thoughts in the comments. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Woman moves to the other side of the world to escape her stalker. Meet Scarlett O'Connor, age 23, and from the greater Manchester area, who just moved to Australia from the UK to avoid her stalker, Aidan Feeney, age 24. Mr. Feeney and Miss O'Connor were friends for four years before he bombarded her with over 3,000 texts, threatened to rip her head off, and paid someone to burn her house down. After the two friends had an ill-advised one-night stand, Scarlett told Aidan she wasn't interested in a relationship. He repeatedly asked her out on a date, and when she said no, he began threatening her. Aiden also began to bombard Scarlett's male friends with text messages, threatening them and telling them to stay away from her. After a casual night out with friends, Scarlett returned to the house which she shared with her sister and another friend. The front window had been smashed. Scarlett reported Aiden's threats to burn down her house, so firefighters came over to secure the house by taping up the letterbox and installing extra fire alarms. But a few nights later, while Scarlett was spending the night at another friend's house, her sister called her and screamed that the house was on fire. Aiden had paid a 19-year-old kid, Tyler Bennett, to set the house on fire. After being unable to push fire starters through the litter box, Bennett threw them in through the smashed front window. Once the curtains caught fire, the rest of the living room quickly burned, destroying the entire ground floor of the house. Feeney and Bennett have both been arrested and charged with arson with intent to endanger human life. Bennett was sentenced to four years in jail, and Feeney was sentenced to eight and a half years, but both may serve only half that amount of time. Shockingly, Feeney had prior arrests for arson, stalking, and harassment against another woman two years prior. O'Connor said that the jail time wasn't enough, and she was too emotionally distraught to remain in the UK. She acknowledges that moving to another country hasn't solved all her problems, but it's given her the space to start her life over again. She says the worst part of the experience is that it's left her un able to trust anyone.